welcome so uh, in our last class we have studied and uh, did a thorough analysis of inverting and non inverting amplifiers using op amp so next thing we should do is of course an analysis on difference amplifier but before that uh, let's ask a question what happens if we by chance or by mistake uh, swap or change the plus minus terminal of uh, of the op amp in either of these circuits so say say consider this circuit this is a inverting amplifier let me copy it okay so this is the correct circuit of an inverting amplifier now what happens if we by chance or by mistake make this as plus and this one as minus okay so the question is what happens if we swap the inverting and non inverting terminals plus and minus inputs uh in an non this is uh, this is inverting amplifier originally it was inverting amplifier in an inverting amplifier so this is the swapped uh, the circuit with swapped uh, terminals so this is so this is the wrong circuit okay we should have minus here and plus here but i have the wrong circuit i have plus here and minus here so what will happen how do we analyze it okay so let's study that so once again i mean what we have to do is uh, find the answer to the question what will be the value of output vo if we know the value of input v1 so given v1 vo will be how much so this is what we have to find out for this wrong circuit but the process that we will follow is once again same we will find out the uh, first we have to find the unknowns that we have to uh, solve for so the unknowns are of course vo output and here vn okay v1 is given and vp is equal to 0 so these are knowns v1 is given and vp is equal to 0 so we have two unknowns so now to find or solve for these two unknowns we need two relationships now these two relationships one of course will come from here okay from this part of the circuit which is the series combination of r1 and r2 so we can uh, we can find the current here and then apply potential divider rule which we did before so uh, let me write it quickly so vn will be equal to vo so it will be some sort of average of vo and v1 average of vo and v1 because vn is in between vo and v1 okay so uh, the rule you can remember this uh, v it will be vo multiplied by r1 divided by r1 plus r2 plus v1 multiplied by r2 
2 divided by r1 plus r2. So, it is a weighted average of vo and v1 and the weight is with v, uh, the weight associated to vo is proportional to r1. So, vo is further from r1 and closer to r2. Therefore, we have vo multiplied by r1 the resistance which is further and with v1 we have r2 that means the resistance which is further from v1. So, this is the rule for Vn. So, this is one relation. You can also derive it by finding the current and then adding the voltage drop here the way we did it uh, in the last class. Okay. Here we did that. Okay. So, and you see we have the same pretty, pretty much the same result. Okay. So, uh, this is a quicker way of doing it. Okay. Now, from this uh, we can write V o in terms of V n. So, this will become V n multiplied by R 1 plus R 2. Okay. So, V n multiplied by this factor minus V 1 R 2 and whole divided by this R 1. So, this is relationship number 1 and the second relationship will of course come from the static characteristic of the op amp. So, I will uh, do this now a bit quickly because we have done this all uh, already twice and we have we are now a bit more matured. So, we can do it little quicker. Okay. So, the second relationship is the static characteristic which is here we have V p minus V n, here we have V o and the characteristic uh, looks like this. For an ideal op amp this line goes very close to the y axis and like this. So, this is the static characteristic. Okay. Now, Uh, okay, there is there is a mistake. The mistake is that not mis I mean a small mistake. So V n is now uh, uh, the voltage at the plus terminal. Okay, and V p is now the voltage at minus terminal. Okay, so be, uh, because I have changed this sign. So let let me just change these names. Let me make V n equal to V p, V p equal to V n. So, that n st stands for negative and p stands for positive. So, everywhere now I have to make this n and uh, this p. This is p, this is p. Anywhere else? Yeah, here. This is p. Okay. So, because this is now V p, this is now V n. Okay. V n 0, V p is this much. Yeah, I guess everything is correct. Okay. So, now V n is equal to 0 here. So, therefore, this I can write simply as equal to V p since V n is equal to 0. Therefore, this is the curve relation between V p and V o. So, this is one relation which comes from the static characteristic of the op amp and the other relationship is this which comes from the external circuit potential divider kind of potential divider rule here. So, now let us plot them together. So, this is the static characteristic and let me draw this curve. Okay. So, this curve is V o or y axis y is equal to this is called this x, x axis, x multiplied by m minus some constant because v 1 is given. So, this is y equal to m x minus c. Okay. So, that curve will look like this uh, m x minus c. So, the slope will be positive 
but the intercept will be negative like this. Okay. So, the intercept is negative because this is negative assuming V 1 positive and uh, this is uh, the slope here is of course, positive because resistances are positive. So, now what will be the solution? You see these two curves intersects at three points 1, 2, 3. That means, there are possibly three solutions. So, this is one so this is one solution, this is another solution and this is another solution. So, we have so three possible solutions. Okay. You can call them as uh, give them some names uh, this point as A, this point as B, this point as C. Okay. So, we have three possible solutions for uh, the unknown V p and V o. If the solution is this, then output V o will be minus V supply. Okay. So, let me write them A, B and C. For A, we have output V o equal to minus V supply. This is minus V supply and V p is equal to uh, something V p is this much. Okay? Something I am not writing this something and here for point B we have V o equal to something between uh, minus V supply and plus V supply. So, here let us write this is minus V supply less than V o less than V supply and V p this is 0 almost 0 V p is equal to or almost equal to 0. And for point C we will have V o output equal to V supply plus V supply and V p is again uh, something. So, this will this this if you drop a a vertical line this will be the value of V p. Once again here in this case for A if you drop a vertical line here this will be the value of V p something let me write this something. Okay. So, there are three possible solutions because we have three intersects intercepts uh, sections. Okay. So, but output cannot take three values at the same time output can take only one value. So, which value will it take? Will it take A or will it take B or will it take C? So, that is right, but output cannot take three values at the same time. So, which value will it take? Let me tell you the answer. The answer is that uh, we will show you or justify you that the point B, the point B which is this point is an unstable solution. The point B is an unstable solution. Therefore, it is unlikely that the solution will be uh, or the output will be at this value. Okay. So, therefore, it is unlikely imp almost impossible that a V o will uh, will stay at B. So, the output cannot take the value which is suggested by the solution B. So, it will then take. So, therefore, 
VO will stay at or I should I may say the solution will stay at A or B not B C A or C that means VO will be equal to minus V supply or plus V supply minus V supply or plus V supply still we have two two possibilities which one so which one will the output take and the answer is uh, it will depend on the past history of vo or the previous value of vo okay depending on the previous value of vo So this is what I am going to justify. So first let me justify why point B is not stable. So for that let me just copy this. So let me first tell that why point B is not stable or unstable. For that assume that at some moment the output is, I mean the solution is here is at point B okay? at some moment say this is here. But then due to some disturbance due to whatever the reason is say the output VO changes a bit. Okay. It can go up a bit slightly or go down slightly due to whatever reason you can think of. In, I mean, this op amp is an IC, so the output may depend also on the sub, this voltage supplies and uh, say also if the voltage supply have some well, noise, noise uh, that will also affect VO or whatever the reason is, okay, whatever the reason is, VO can fluctuate a bit it can go up a bit or go down a bit. Now what will happen if VO goes up a bit okay? if this point uh, this value is increased a bit then the value at VP will also increase assuming V1 is uh, constant is not changing. Say if this increases slightly then of course VP is some sort of average of V1 and VO. So if VO increases VP will increase. Also here uh, you can see if this increases this is constant then VP will increase. Okay? So uh, VP I mean VP must lie on this line. VP must lie on this line okay uh, so I, I mean the, the vo versus vp point that must lie on this line because this r1 and r2 and v1 none of them are changing because this line is defined by r1 r2 r1 v1 all these values all these values are not changing therefore this line will remain same now if vo increases a bit vp will also increase a bit so this if i start from here i will move slightly here okay like this okay but as i must lie on this line okay so, so i can go a bit like this so now if i go a bit like this if i come here say then at this value of vp so at this point okay uh, let me show this the same thing in this diagram without making that clumsy. Okay. So, if I move from here to here at this point slightly 
this is a slight mo movement small change although I am not I am drawing a significant amount but as in this is a small change now what happens the static characteristic or the property of the op amp that says that at this value of input ok so now this is the value of vp or vp minus vn because vn is 0 so now at this point by dropping a perpendicular from this new point so at this point the output of the op amp should be this this much ok so therefore the op amp will now try to increase its output and and match this characteristic because op amp believes or uh, uh, believes on this property this static characteristic so the op amp when sees the input vp minus vn is here it will try to increase its output to this value therefore vo will increase further so what will happen this point will move towards the right further ok and say now if it comes here let me zoom in ok so now if it comes here ok then it will see uh, the output should be this much vo should be here ok so the op amp will try to increase its output further so this way what will happen this point will move gradually gradually like this and will come here at this point point c then the op amp will see ok now i am simultaneously on this green line because i am not allowed to move away from a green line but i am also on this black line this static characteristic so then the op amp will be happy because for this value of input this is exactly what the output should be from the static characteristic so this is where the op amp will stop this is where the op amp will become happy so if i start from this point and by any chance move a bit towards the right by a slight increment of the output vo due to whatever reason that will cause further increment of output and this will go on in a chain until and unless i reach this point similarly if if i if i have a small change in the opposite direction say output is reduced by a small amount then from this point i come here i am not allowed to leave this green line okay i must always stay on this green line because that is the relationship which i obtain from the potential divider rule here so if output decreases i'll come here and now at this value of input so now this is the input to the op amp so this is the input to the op amp now for this input the output of op amp should be here which is less than the current view so what will happen the output will decrease further so i will move down further here and then once again for this input this should be the output of the op amp so op amp will try to decrease its output further so i will keep moving like this until i come at this point point a where the op amp will be happy again because now this point lies on the static characteristic of the uh, op amp so the op amp will be happy so if i move slightly towards the right or slightly towards the left i will go and go and go and hit this point c or in the opposite direction and hit this point a so this point is unstable ok so that so th this is why this point uh, b is unstable now let us see are these points a and c stable ok so let us check are these points so point b is unstable 
but okay now uh, let's ask is is c stable okay so let's focus on this part now see i start from this point and by some chance i move a bit uh, away from this say the output is increased vo is increased therefore i come here okay again a small change so i come from here to here and then at this point so this is the value of vp minus vn and the static characteristic of op amp will say that for this value of vp minus, minus vn the output of op amp should be here so the op amp will now try to decrease the value of vo why because it has higher value of output than it should have according to the static characteristic so now vo will decrease vo will decrease means what now i will come back in the opposite direction okay and i will come back to point c similarly if i move a bit in this direction say uh, i come starting from here i come to this point due to a small change in vo i cannot leave this green line so now this is the value of vp minus vn so at this value of vp minus vn this should be the output of the op amp but the actual output is here so the op amp will think no no i have to increase my output so it will increase the output and therefore i will go back once again towards the point c so if i move away from here to here i will go back if i move away from here to here i will go back therefore this is a point which is stable because if i move away i go back okay so is point c stable yes similarly you can show that point that a this point is also stable okay now okay so i have tried to justify why this point b is not stable and these two are the only stable solutions a and c a and c okay now the next question is uh, so what will be the output will the solution be a or will it be c okay uh, i'm telling you it depends on the previous value of the um, output the history of the output so okay let me uh, so let us now focus on uh, this circuit okay so say at some moment the uh, value of vo is um, plus v supply okay so let's make a guess not guess say at some moment this is equal to plus v supply at some moment now if say let me just take a concrete example L let me take a concrete example uh, let me call this v supply equal to 15 volt so this will be minus 15 volt okay let me choose the value of input v1 equal to say 5 volt example now this so this is equal to 15 at some moment 
okay so this is 15 volt this is 5 volt and uh, let's take all these resistances equal to 1 kilo ohm 1 kilo ohm r2 equals 1 kilo ohm for ease of calculation therefore vp will be what vp will be just an average of v1 and v o okay so in this expression or here if i put 1 1 1 so this is half so 1 1 1 this is also half so vp will be average of v o and v1 v o by 2 v1 by 2 so then vp will be equal to 10 volt this is 5 this is 15 this will be average 10 volt now if this is 10 volt vp is 10 volt vn is 0 volt okay so this op amp sees that vn is 0 volt vp is 10 volt this is higher therefore output will be of course equal to positive v supply 15 volt so it will stay at that value happily it will not change its output okay so if i start from the value of 15 volt at the output then then that means this is equal to uh, 10 volt and this is higher than vn so therefore output will remain at its value 15 volt because op amp behaves like a comparator what it does it compares vp and vn and if vp is higher it it increases output if vp is lower it decreases output that is what it does now let us take another example another case where say we have uh, say where we have this equal to minus 15 volt so this point is at minus 15 volt but the input I am taking the same value 5 volt so what will be this value average of this and this so then then uh, 5 and minus 15 so, so this will be average will be uh, plus 5 so this will be 5 volt because 5 minus 15 is my uh, sorry it will be minus 5 5 minus 15 is minus 10 divided by 2 is minus 5 okay so this will be minus 5 now that means this is 0 this is minus 5 so vp is lower and if vp is lower what will the op amp do op amp will keep its output at the minus v supply that is minus 15 volt so it will stay happily there it is not going to change its output so therefore we see that in this example the output will depend on the previous value of the vo if we start from the assumption that vo is minus 15 volt then it will stay at minus 15 volt if we assume that it starts from plus 15 volt it will stay at plus 15 volt it is not going to change so in this example so we observe that uh, let me write so we observe that if we start with v o equal to plus 15 volt the op amp stays happily at the same value but if we start from v o equal to minus 15 volt then op amp stays at v o equal to minus 15 volt so it depends on the previous value okay so let me 
us summarize what we have seen. So, a small summary. So, we have started with the question that sorry, what happens if we swap or alter by mistake the plus minus uh, uh, inputs uh, of an in uh, no, this is inverting inverting amplifier. Okay, original inverting amplifier should have minus terminal here and plus terminal here. So, if by mistake if we swap it what happens? The question is will it still behave like an amplifier? Will it be the case that V o is equal to V 1 multiplied by some constant like we had previously? For the original inverting amplifier it was minus R 2 by R 1 times V 1. Will it be so? And in this detail analysis we see no, the output will not be equal to V 1 multiplied by R 1 R 2 sorry R multiplied by R 2 by R 1, it will not be so. Instead output will be either positive supply for V supply or minus V supply. Okay? So, this we call the output will go to saturation positive saturation or negative saturation and which which one will it go to that depends on the previous value of view. So, if by uh, let me say it in other way if by any chance output goes to plus V supply it will stay there happily no problem that is a valid stable solution. If output goes to this point by any chance it will stay there again happily forever, but the output is not going to be input V 1 multiplied by R minus R 2 by R 1. No, it is not an amplifier, it is not going, going to work like an amplifier. That is because this point is unstable, it will not stay here. Okay. So, the answer let me write it will not behave like amplifier, it will go to saturation plus or minus we have seen it with thorough analysis and also another observation very nice observation will virtual sorting the concept of virtual sorting be valid in this wrong circuit uh, will V p equal to V n no why V n is 0, but how much is V p. So, suppose if I land up here at this point C then V p is this much. Okay. Then V p is this much which is here to here which is not 0, it is positive, but V n is 0. Okay. So, here at this point V p greater than 0, V n equal to 0. Similarly, if I land up at this point I will have V p less than 0 this much. Okay. This is this will be the value of V p but V n equal to 0. So, V p is not equal to V n unless at this point. Yes, at this point V p will be V n because both are uh, so V V p is also 0, but this is not a stable point. This is not a point that we are likely to have. So, virtual sorting is not true for this circuit. Okay. So, that is why I said virtual sorting is not a property of op amp in general, it is a property of this circuit, some special circuits not of all circuits. 
this circuit does not work with the concept of virtual sorting. Okay. So, one small note you cannot if, if I give you this circuit and ask you the question that V1 is 5 volt what will be V0? You cannot uh, do the analysis with the assumption uh, Vp equal to Vn so Vp is equal to 0. No that method will not work. Okay. So, be, that is because virtual sorting is not true for this circuit. We will come back to this circuit again later this is a very useful circuit although this is a wrong circuit, but this is also a very useful circuit. This has a name this is called Smith trigger uh, S C H M I T T I guess the spelling is trigger. We will come back to this circuit again and again. Thank you.